Welcome, welcome everybody to Yoko and Frisky's Dimensional Magical Mystery Tour Bus Podcast Rift. I am here today with my brother from another mother, Met- MC MetroCard Frisky, and we have a lovely guest. You want me to call you Jay? Fine. Perfect. And today <laughs> we are going over a subject that is near and dear to my heart and Jay's heart. <gasps> Voice acting! All right, take it away, uh, Frisky, real quick. Take it away, Penny. I am here, joined today by some fabulous voice actors and i thought it'd be a great experience stuff just for me but for you listening at home to get some of the inside scoop on how it all works so i'm gonna be asking you guys a few questions and uh you know this will be like a fun open discussion and you can tell me about your uh, individual experiences in the voice acting business so um first uh just like to ask uh to both of you what was it that made you want to get involved in the first place? Starting with uh, our guest, Jay. Yes. Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, mine is part personal, part I've grown up on cartoons, and it's just like, oh, what if I was X character, you know? Um, the other part was, um, as you both already know from knowing me personally, um, I didn't really, really think about getting into it until like later in my high school years, early college years, um, because of everything that was going on with my mom. Um, she unfortunately passed away from breast cancer, but the whole experience I had with living with her, um, really like opened my perspective. I really wanted to be someone that would put smiles on people's faces as cheesy as that sounds. Um, And a lot of that was inspired by the unfortunate situation that I had with my mom as she was, you know, living with what she was living with. Uh, My mind was kind of like, well, if I can be someone that puts smiles on people's faces, regardless of how I do it, then that would make me happy. And voice acting, I felt, was something that, you know, I could really get into and be that thing for a lot of people. Wow, that's really inspirational. Yeah, I respect that a lot. Yeah, dude. Mine isn't so... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, what about you? (laughs) What's your inspirational story? Mine really isn't so heartfelt. It was kind of like an accident. accident. Yeah, like similar to Jay, I went to school for animation and I thought that's what I wanted to do. And uh, lo and behold, to me, animation school is a waste of time. But I had a teacher who really liked my voice. And He's like, I'm going to give you $50 to record a British squirrel because I heard you making jokes. Can you do it? And I was like, uh, yes. So I started there and then I didn't know how to proceed until um, my, oh, a little little similar. I spoke in uh, front of people during a funeral and my grandma passed away. And they were like, dude, you got to do this. This is your calling. And I really didn't think much of it. So I started doing research and I joined a meetup group and I got lessons from a cartoon voice actor. Um, He did like commercials and stuff because I paid him the most. And the meetup group was supportive. Like the voice acting community is so supportive. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like, wouldn't you agree, Jay? Yeah. Totally. Oh, my goodness. And compared to how stressful the animation industry was, I was just like, you know what? I'll still draw, but I feel like this is more welcoming. And here I am. Oh, those are some great stories. Um, So uh, I want to know, 
what's the most rewarding aspect of doing the voice acting? Like, what 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 do you get out of it personally? You go first, Jay. <laughs> That's it's also difficult. Um, I think it's it's hard to say what's the most, but there are definitely a couple of things that I love the most about it. Um, definitely going back on what Yoko was saying, like the community is just outstanding, and I think a lot of that stems from just how difficult it is to get quote unquote get in the business you know a lot of a lot of people kind of understand the struggle and look to push you forward versus you know compete with you which is outstanding um but i think also just like the audition process is the most rewarding and i mean that in the sense of when you complete something you send it you know you just get this rush of man, I, 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 it sounded so good. I feel so good about it, and regardless of the result, it it really motivates me to just keep keep going. Like there are definitely times where I'm just like, eh, I'm tired. I, I don't really know if I want to do this, and then you do it, and you're like, oh man, that, that was that was great. I don't know why I didn't want to do it in the first place. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of like just I feel like inner reward that you feel whenever you just produce anything because it's like yes i did this i made this and regardless of the result you know i can still be happy with the work that i did yeah dude similar feelings (laughs) very similar feelings okay uh yeah are are you piggybacking off of his answer (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to piggyback because um, there have been days where you just get so tired because you're working on a different project or you're, um, let's just say you're at your regular nine to five and you do the audition or you just do the job. And you, for me, some days I'm like, oh, God, I don't think I did it right. And the next thing you know, the guy's like, oh, my God, I'm going to have you on for this project the next time. And that just floors you and builds your confidence mm-hmm. step by, you know, little by little. Does it make you pee a little? Oh, oh. <laughs> you know me, wagging my tail, going, ah, and then I just pee. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I love the, I the full honesty on display here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we talked about the rewarding aspects, but let's, let's go the opposite way. Like, Let's get into the nitty gritty. Like, what are some some of the setbacks you faced and the hardships? Um, if you want to discuss it, you know, you don't have to. But we all, I think we all know, as you said, getting into the business is a hard, hard challenge. So, what would be like some of your biggest hardships you had to face so far? I think a lot of it is like having patience. And honestly, being like mentally able to um, take rejection because voice acting in that sense is a lot like you're looking for a job. You apply to all these different places, you interview. Um, Sometimes you're just like, oh man, my interview was amazing. Like, there's no way they're not going to hire me. And then you get the email that's like, oh, we decided to go in a different direction. And, you know, there's times where you have that crushing feeling of, you know, what did I do wrong? You know, how how could I have done better? And the hard part about that is that you don't really get feedback. It's very rare that you get feedback that's like, you know, we liked your voice, but this, this, and this. Um, A lot of the time, there's a lot of people who are just like, man, I really wish I knew what I could improve on. You know, I really wish I knew what I could do better. Um, And it dealing with droughts is also like again like you kind of need to have that mental fortitude because you'll audition for hundreds and hundreds of roles and maybe get one of them you know it's it's really hard because a lot of these people that are looking for voices it's not always about having the best voice it's having the voice that they think fit whatever you're auditioning for the most so you could be the most outstanding voice they've ever heard and they're like you know you are great but not really what we're looking for and so you know having to deal with sometimes months of not getting anything and 
kind of dealing with that 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 you know the how it feels mentally in your head you know you start to to say to yourself oh man is this something that i'm really good for you know uh, i'm not getting roles does does that mean it's over for me and so there's just a lot of you know mental uh, blocks that you kind of have to get over and understand um like one thing my voice coach tells me is that right after you do an audition you you just forget it like you you kind of train yourself to forget that you even did it um and there are times where i forgot that i auditioned for something and i got an email back like hey your voice is great i'm like oh I, I I auditioned for this. I'm oh, sure. Yes, I'm very good. Thank you. Uh, so that I feel like is really the hardest part of doing this. Wow, that's so cool. Um, for me, um, I've been. Uh, are you? I didn't. Did I interrupt you? Are we good? You're good. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, for me, um. I've been doing this full time now for about a year. Well, part time to full. And what I found is I get similar things. Like I'll uh, people who I've worked with because I have a coach as well. But we're all on. We can talk individually or with a group on Facebook. And sometimes the Facebook group um, has some great inspirational. Um, motivators or they'll be like look dude I've auditioned 150 times for this um, n- it's not always a voice acting type of thing it could be for a commercial because mm-hmm. little unbeknownst to us some of those commercials pay can pay like $20,000 yeah like the commercials are really where the money's <laughs> yeah and I've been doing those, um, like just this week, 30 seconds. I only spent an hour and I got like $150 for a hospital spot. And I'm like, okay, I'll take it. Um, oh, so you're the it, voice that keeps telling me to get the vaccine on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> mm, it's you. I knew it. Yeah. I knew it sounded familiar. <laughs> get the shot. Uh, dial one eight hundred. Get the COVID vax. And or get else, your, yeah. <laughs> or else, and get your free donut card today. <laughs> you know, crap like that. Remember that gym you used to go to. Well, you can until you get vaccinated, <laughs> right? Dial now. Or um, I've got some. I got paid for. Um, I had one ad that I really hated to do, and it was kind of racist. And, of course, the guy didn't pay me much for it. Like, he literally only gave me $20 for it. And Wait, did he know you were black, though? No. He was trying to He was trying to say... I'll just give you a rundown. He was saying that Muslims, American Muslims, are a threat to our democracy because they want equal rights. That's pretty much what the ad was. I was wow. like, what? And I looked them up, and they were... They are in New York. They're spending money to create terrible ads. So what I ended up doing was, um, for political ads, $150 per uh, 50 words. And nobody's contacted me since. So I was like, <laughs> cool. Or um, if you want to go hourly, uh, $500 an hour, mm-hmm. period. Or you just have a minimum, you need to pay this much for me to even, like, consider doing this. Oh, yeah. And commercial rights and broadcasting rights. So if you want to broadcast this in your state or across the United States, you got to pay an extra $150 fee. So I, I, I'm just like, I'm not going to say no, but you're going to pay me for it. Mm-hmm. That's right, sister. Um, there's also been... Here's the thing. The more someone is willing to pay me, the easier they are to work with. Like the one client I just told you about that I did a commercial for, we did a Zoom we did a Zoom call and they directed me best experience. Best experience because you give them what they want instantly. And 
it can be nerve wracking. That can be nerve wracking. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, instant gratification wise, what they want, when they want it, and how they want it for the future. And a uh, big key there is once you do that and you send them an invoice, thank them for choosing you. That brings them back instantly. That makes them want you and sees value in you because you are a valuable person. Regardless if you think so or not, you are valuable. Yeah, and just to kind of piggyback off of that, like a lot of people don't realize that just being good to work with is what a lot of these like producers really remember. Because at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to be that person that, you know, they have to do all these edits for, or there's all this clashing, there's all this, you know, drama. Um, Because even if you're a good voice, that's something that they'll... You know, they could have easily gotten someone else. And so the experience working with you is what they remember most. And that's kind that's that's what brings you you know, projects and jobs are like, oh, you were great. I want to work with you more because you were pleasant. You know, you did everything on time. You were great. So we'll, we'll keep you in thought versus if you're a great voice, but you're not pleasant to work with. They're going to be like, oh, well, you know, we had you for this one thing, but we'll, we'll remember that you were terrible to work with and we won't work with you again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm sure both of you are very pleasant to work with. So I don't think there's any black marks on your report card. <laughs> mhm. <laughs> so, so um are any of you allowed to talk about some of the gigs you've done? Like some of the work you've gotten? Like, you know, like the commercial you just mentioned? Um I am, but I had one project a guy paid me for something and because i didn't sign the contract fast enough for him he just told me to buzz off (laughs) i was like why i did the work for you and you paid me for it i'm very confused sir go ahead jay um there are definitely projects that i've been invited to audition for that i'm not allowed to talk about um which that is stressful mostly because like Regardless of whether I got the role or not, it's like, oh, wow, I was considered for this and you sent me this role. Like, that's actually insane. Um, But there are a couple of projects that I'm working for now. Uh, My favorite is I'm working for, it's it's a furry comic dub called UberQuest. And I'm so happy to be working with these people because, like, going way back to what you said about our group um, became like, we all became friends like really quick. Uh, And one of them like lives in the city. So we've actually like gone to um, to the mall before, just kind of hung out, had coffee. Um, And I've I've always said to myself with with UberQuest, uh, if I ever got like really, really big, I would never forget that you know, Uber Quest was the first project that I worked for because, you know, the the crew is, is just so great. Um, and they're a big reason why, like, when I'm having those droughts of auditioning for things and really not getting the roles, uh, they really help keep me motivated because I'm just like, these are an amazing group of people that I have the privilege of working with. And, you know, just seeing that I can be a part of a group like this really motivates me to keep going because there's so many more people that I'm sure I'm going to meet that I'm just going to be like, damn, this is great. (laughs) And here's another thing. Like, Jay and I keep sending each other clips and auditions all the time. I mean, Mm -hmm. we support each other. And I haven't got any character voice work, but that doesn't mean that I'm not getting work. And if I find anything for Jay... I keep him in mind. You're like mm-hmm. at the top of my priority list because sometimes a role that I'll do may not fit because I'm female and sometimes sometimes I need a male 
voice and they'll ask me, hey, do you know any male voice actors in your, um, in your network? And I'll send them your way if mm-hmm. they've contacted you or not. I don't know. <laughs> or I'll tell them, like, hey, here's your thing. He's yeah. a swell guy. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. You got each other's back. You know, you got to look out for one another. Um, do you have any... Uh, personal characters that you like to voice like any ones you've made up or just any voices that you're fond of doing just for kicks mm. voices that I'm fond of doing for kicks yeah like something you like practice in the mirror or do, or do without even thinking like subconsciously uh I don't know if there's really any specific for me. Um, But what I love the most about voice acting, just kind of using this question for that, is it it gives you the okay to do really dumb, silly voices and, like, just run with it. Um, Like... I'm just weird and I'll just talk in random voices because it just feels fun to do that. And like, I, you'll, you'll get, I, I get faces from like friends, like you, you good dude. You all right. I'm like, what did I do something? <laughs> but, um, it, it, it's a lot more comforting knowing that I can go into the booth, say some really wacky stuff or like scream to the, you know, until my voice is almost dead and it just be okay because that's what they're asking me to do. Um, like I've spoken to friends about some of the stuff that I've like auditioned for and they're like, what, what does Jim not say anything to you when you're like recording? Like, you know, how do you live in the house with someone and not have them like, you know, judge you or anything? Like I've screamed crazily in, in my booth before and was like, Oh, is everything good? Jim's like, what what are you talking about? I'm like, okay, you didn't hear anything I said, which is good. But I always have that, because I live with someone, I always have that thought in my head, like, oh man, what if, what if he could hear half half the stuff that I'm saying in the, in my booth? (laughs) Oh my gosh, I know it. Like, my roommate, same thing. Sometimes I've had to tell her, like, she's the quietest person on earth, but Sometimes I'll have a script that is just really difficult, and I'll hear a typey, typey, type. Or the lawnmower. That's the worst. I, do you have that with the lawnmower? Like, neighbors like, oh, I'm going to lawnmower right uh, now. <laughs> um, I mean, luckily enough, and I'm sure this will become like a question, I spent a lot of money on making sure that my booth is, like, as soundproof as possible. But... It, it, it's annoying because, like, I don't live that far away from the train. So, like, oh. I I hear the train. But usually it doesn't come up in my recordings. <laughs> but I get so self-conscious because I'm like, oh, man, I hear all these voices. I hear all these noises outside. And I don't know if it's going to, you know, get caught in my, in my recording. I turn off my AC whenever I'm going into the booth to record because it's Same. like... Especially, like, those high frequencies and noise in the background. Like, those are the worst because like you don't hear it and then you like turn up you you like normalize your audio and then you hear it and you're like this was such a great take and all I'm all I can hear now is all these little noises in the background and now I have to re-record and god yeah. relatable <laughs> hashtag voiceover problems <laughs> Like, I don't know if oh. you heard anything in the background, but my neighbors have been really fucking noisy. <laughs> Maybe you haven't. I don't know. We'll see. Um, what was you're that? In a, you're in the basement, so nobody can really hear you. I'm in the basement. I'm That's alone. like the best place to be. For a voice actor or a DJ, best place to be. Go ahead. What was your question? You're right. Um... No, I was going to ask Jay if he can do that voice he did when he first popped in, the, the Bonifa voice. Bonifa voice? The, the Bonifa. Yeah, the bon- bondola, the bondola. Oh, Bomb Shaquita Lafondria? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 this 
bombs the Queen of Lithuania. <laughs> <laughs> She's the <that> girl. <laughs> she should mm-hmm. babble forever. Right? Oh my god. Ayoko, I know you got a few characters you like to pull out of your ass. I mean, your pocket. All the time. <laughs> what are some of your favorites? Everybody hates it, but I just love doing the Valley High Girl. Like, hi. Like, hi, everyone. My name's Shelly. I like um, goat cheese salads and pumpkin spice lattes. It's pumpkin spice season. Oh my god! As as soon as I saw the, as soon as I saw the Dunkin' Donuts commercial about all the pumpkin, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> Time to put like two hundred dollars on my Dunkin' Donuts card so I can <laughs> oh get god. pumpkin spice like every day. Like we're buddies in this. Let's go. Yeah, no, or- so like like like, I've been buying like cake cups to help save money because I really used to do Dunkin' Donuts every day. So that was like. Hundred dollars on my Dunkin' Donuts card every month. Damn. Um, so then I got K cups because I'm like, oh, I can get like forty of these for twenty dollars, which is a lot less than a hundred dollars. Um, and then I saw the the pumpkin spice commercial. And I'm like, oh my god, the K cups aren't pumpkin spice, so I have to go get pumpkin spice. No, no, no. They have them. They have Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin spice. I but it's not you. the same. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're right, boo. Yeah. It's not the same. I went into a Then I looked at the $5 that I spent on my pumpkin spice latte, and I'm just like, ugh. The pain, but it's so good. Oh, self-control. It's it's, it's a hard... It's hard to overcome. Mm-hmm. I went into a Dollar Tree one time, and I saw a pumpkin spice condom. Oh. Oh, God. A Dollar Tree? Yeah, man. They're... I'd expect to see that at like a Spencer's or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on up in the world. <laughs> I, I guess so. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Hear... Mm-hmm. My favorite Yoko voice is like when you do the nerd. <laughs> oh, is it the one with the... I got a couple nerd ones. Is, is it this one? Or... Well, you see. Yeah, uh, that one. girl original. <laughs> is it that one? Yes, it's that one. <laughs> <laughs> that girl originally in the comic book got shot by the Joker and she didn't have a relationship with Bruce Wayne and the inseam of uh, Mario's pants is actually three and a half feet and I don't understand why other gamers don't know this you're not a gamer until you hit 300 hours in Mario Galaxy and Mario 64 Okay? Pokemon is not a game, okay? Animal Crossing is not a game, okay? The real OGs are (laughs) FIFA and FIFA players and all of us who play Mario. And just so you know, Mario is better than Sonic because Mario has real plots and Sonic is just not, like, dark enough for my liking. It's not enough guns. (laughs) <laughs> it's not enough guns in Sonic. I love I love that about Shadow the Hedgehog. Is I know. I know they fixed like the problem, him... but then they took out the guns in the next game. They need to bring back the guns. <laughs> they gave Shadow guns, and then when he dies, sometimes he goes, "Damn it!" And they're like, "Yeah, this is edgy." He says the word "damn," and he has guns. It's like, oh, uh... where's that damn chaos emerald? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just it just works. It just works. Well, that's like in like re- regular show. Uh, there's a there's one point where Mordecai's like, "You've pissed me off," and everyone's like, Ooh. "Whoa, Cartoon Network! You can do that? He's allowed I to say that?" No, I didn't know he said that. Yes, yeah, there's an episode where he's like, "You know what? You've pissed me off," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Hey. Okay, maybe this should be on Adult Swim. Well, I mean, technically they have an Adult Swim version of it. Yeah, um, yeah. But that's why, like, regular show was, like, right before Adult Swim started. Because it was like, oh, they they definitely got away with a few things. Well, shout out to Adult mm-hmm. Swim celebrating their 20th anniversary. Oh, oh, a baby go. was born on that day. It was beautiful. <laughs> I'm a tsunami baby. <laughs> well, 
that's that's a good segue into my next question. I was gonna ask you if you guys have any uh, favorite voice actors. Hmm. You go, Jay. I got a couple. No, you go. Well, I think. You know yours. I'm surprised you didn't shout out to the folks at Rocco. No, yeah, I mean, do you know that he also voiced Mr. Crocker? Yes. I, and, I, like, I went through all the different voices he did, and I'm just like, my God, this, this, is, this is a talented person right here. Mm-hmm. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm mad because his name is not coming to my head, but... Uh, I'll, I'll find it for you. Hold on. Yeah. Um, I just love Rocco, so if you voice Rocco, then it's... We're Carlos Alazero. Yeah. He, he was also uh, Juan Dissimo. Yeah. And I'm like, this guy, well, this guy got range. He was on Reno 911, and I was like, his voice sounds familiar. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, I don't, don't you love that? It's like you hear a voice, and you're like, oh, I think I heard that voice. And then you, like, furiously search up their uh, uh, IMDb, and then you see who it is, and it's like, oh, my God, you voice this and this and this? Mm-hmm. Tara, sh- who are those guys? Hey. And how do they know? <laughs> <laughs> Tara Shadow. Strong is, a, is an obvious favorite. Hell yeah. Because, like, she voices everything in existence, and it's just because she's amazing. Um, she's, she's been the head honcho for, like, since I was a kid. Yeah. Like, if, if there's any voice actor or actress that anyone knows, it's Tara Strong. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like... You ask anyone, oh, who, who's a voice actor you like? The first is probably going to be Tara Strong because that's the only person they remember by name, but it's just because her voice is so iconic. And she's been around so long. She's been Bubbles. I didn't know she was Bubbles. Um, Shame on you. You're Twilight not a real Sparkle. fan. You're not yeah, a real she's fan. Uh, she's uh, Timmy Turner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that. <laughs> you she want was, money? Uh, Got it. She was Riku in Final Fantasy X. Oh, yeah, you're right. I thought she did a good job with her. It's like, oh. And then another one, just to name, is John DiMaggio, who also his voice is in everything. But, like, there's there's reason why some of these people are, like, no matter how old they get, they're just going to keep voicing people because they're just fantastic. Mm-hmm. I felt so sad for John DiMaggio when Adventure Time ended. Yeah. Because um, they had, like, a whole panel for it, and he was like, in tears because it, it was like he said it was his favorite thing to work on and to see it end like just broke him I'm like oh no don't cry John DiMaggio he actually created a movie called uh, Behind the Voice or something like that mm. I got it from the library because I'm a loser and <laughs> it was a very well produced movie and I got to find out who more of the voice actors that I didn't know about like um some of my favorites. Carice Summer. She was Susie in Rugrats. Mm. Uh, Dulcie in Tiny... Uh, not Tiny Toons. Sonic. She was Elmira in Tiny Toons. Oh. Um, my girl from Mad TV. Uh, Deborah Wilson. Deborah Wilson. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yo, she getting work. She eating. She eat. Listen, listen, Deborah Wilson, I will say, is a powerhouse because she's been in things that none of us would like realize. She's been in Ratchet and Clank, uh, Batman, the Star Wars, the animated series. Um, she's been in like a lot of mediocre mediocre films, but when she pops up. You're like, yo, Deborah Wilson. She's okay. been in World of Warcraft. Because uh, I was playing it, and I was like, what the? Is that my girl, Deborah? She's in Persona 5. I just, I'm looking this up right now. She's my inspiration because she does fake Oprah impressions, and I love oh. her for it. It's like um, me and my coach, we were having a conversation about Flo from the Progressive commercials. Uh-huh. And, like, She's iconic enough that 
you uh-huh. mention her name and people will know what you're talking about. Uh-huh. Um, and then we were just like looking at her, I am a uh, DB and she's like in all this other stuff. And it's just like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that unless you knew who Flo was and then like took the time to like look through all the things that she's been in. Mm-hmm. Because I was just like, wow, I've never, never seen or heard of this woman, but like, I will stop and watch a progressive commercial just because I see that flows on it because I, I love their commercials. Yeah. And it's just like, you see all this other stuff that they've been in. It's like, oh, wow. Like, I wouldn't have even known this. And you're like, dang. It's like, girl, put yeah. the work. Especially when you discover and and just dig deep. Um, uh, Lamar. Phil Lamar. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was Samurai Jack. Yeah. And he was on uh, Futurama. And there's just so many I, I adore. Like, they inspire me. There's like a whole voice acting archive. And Jim Cummings. Yep. Uh, did you meet him when you went to Anthrocon? I did. Unfortunately, did not. Uh, I I saw him uh, while I was sitting in a seat. <laughs> That's as far as I got. <laughs> That's, all, that's all I got. You spotted him. Yes. Riveting. Um, I my personal favorite voice actor. I know nobody asked me, but I like Joshua Seth, who uh, voices Ty on Digimon Adventure. Oh yeah, is that Digimon Adventure? Is that like one of the newer iterations of it, or no, like the original? That's O O G Digimon. Mm. Like I can recognize his voice in anything. I was watching Akira for the first time not too long he's ago. He's in Akira. Yeah, he's in a he's in the English dub of Akira. I was shocked because it's such a dark movie. Hey man, you gotta get work. Sorry, I didn't mean to spam you, Jay. You gotta get work. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But yeah, there, there's He's so many, right. There's, I... there's, there's a lot of great um, voice actors out there, and um, they deserve more credit. They deserve, you know, Oscar noms, Emmy noms, but it's like they're never recognized, and that sucks. Yeah, that that was a big thing with the Looney, the, the Looney Tunes. The recent Space Jam, um, they had like a, a lot of iconic voices for the, some of the characters, like Bugs Money. And none of them were like credited for anything, and it's like how how I, you point out LeBron James because he's LeBron James, but like how do you not recognize these voices who have been doing this amazing work for for years? Mm-hmm. And then the reason why they put in big smash hit movies actors like regular actors is because they figured they can get more money. From oh, um, Zendaya is in it. Yeah, Everybody likes yeah. her. You're gonna go see it now. But I, I, you're right. I don't know who voiced. Um, I'm gonna look it up right now. I don't know who voiced who. <laughs> don't talk about my and queen. That's, that's a. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> and that's a big thing that happens with, especially now with a lot of animated movies. Is you know, these producers and directors are like, oh, let's just have X really popular actor or actress play this character because they are great actor actress and a lot of them don't realize that being a good actor doesn't necessarily translate into being a good voice actor because you know when you're acting you're seeing them physically and so there's a lot of things that you can kind of get away with you know your physical emotions your physical expressions you know, conversations are different when it's human with human talking versus your voice is put over an animated character. So like some conversations that you have are going to sound completely different because, you know, your voice is being synced to a character. You know, you're not, it's not you doing like physical emoting, it's the character doing physical emoting. And so speaking and acting in the same way that you did in like a movie where you're the physical person acting may not work, you know, for an animated character because it's just a completely different world. Very true. But 
if you're behind the mic, it's best that you pretend that you are the character or you're passionate. Like if you if your character says they're in love, you best damn well play that you're in love so that yeah. way they can feel it. Yeah. They yeah. can feel it, Rocco. They can feel it. You do it can you feel it, Mr. Krabs? Can you feel it, Mr. Krabs? Yeah. Instead, Hollywood wants to put Kim Kardashian in a Paw Patrol movie. Yeah, I saw that. I'm just, I'm just like, is this a joke? Jesus. Are you kidding me? I'm no, not. she is. She's she's in there. She is a character in the Paw Patrol movie, and I'm just like, um, do do, do kids even know who Kim Kardashian is? Like, is that your way to draw the parents that are gonna take their kids to the movie? To be fair, she's used to being on all fours. Oh! <laughs> oh! I ain't even mad at you. I ain't mad at you. Low-hanging fruit, but it still tastes juicy. Oh, God, stop. <laughs> Good night, um, everybody. <laughs> no, nah, like, you guys... you guys, I didn't even have to ask, to ask the question. Like, I think it's so lame when they put celebrities in these... You know, animated films. It's like let's make Nicki Minaj and Drake into a dinosaur in the new Ice Age. Like, who cares, man? Like, <laughs> they're on screen. Yeah, for I like mean, five sometimes, years. sometimes they kill it, but more times than not, you know, because people come into the booth and think, oh, you know, I just have to read this or do this, and then I'm good. And then it just doesn't translate well. Like, you can tell that the person doesn't know. The, the difference between voice acting and regular acting and they're just like oh well if i just do this the way that i do in like normal movies or stuff like that it's gonna it'll be fine it's like no like i can tell that you are a person doing a voice versus you being the character and when that happens it it it, it, it takes you out of what you're watching because then it all you think about is well this is just a person voicing the character yeah and i can hear it and i don't believe it oh. you know it, it kind of ruins that experience um, a good example I, is like I'll, Boss Baby. It's like all you hear is Alex Alex Baldwin's voice coming out of a baby. That's the punchline. I also heard that uh, movie stars are a lot more difficult to work with, and they don't always because they're thinking in a different light. They're not always getting it. Yeah. They basically phone in the performance, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. it's like, you paid for my voice, I'm just gonna talk regularly, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, you know. Uh, Alright, I think, uh, I think my last question for you guys would be, uh, do you have any advice for uh, anyone who's trying to get into the voice acting business? Oh, that could be a whole thing in itself. Um, a few things. One is don't give up. And I know that's kind of cheesy, but like going back to what we were saying before, it, you're going to get nine, nine out of 10 times, you are not going to get a role that you audition for. And that's just, that just comes with the business. Um, that should never be a reflection on you. Like you shouldn't then think, oh, I must be terrible, I'm not good, you know, there's usually hundreds of people auditioning for the same role that you are, and it's not a matter of you not being good, it's just a matter of maybe you not being the best fit for that voice. Um, Like, voice acting is, a lot of producers are really specific about what they want, and they won't know it until they hear it, and when they hear it, you know, that's usually what they go for, and so, you know, whether or not you did a great performance, again, it's not reflective of you as a voice actor. It's just that the director or the producer wanted something and they heard it from someone else and they went with that. But like, there are times where you have auditioned for a project and then a year later, that very same very same person who ran that project was like, you know, I remember hearing your voice from this audition. You know, I may have worked for you and all that stuff. And it's like, Oh wow! I totally forgot that I had even auditions for this a year ago. Um, the other thing is kind of knowing whether your voice acting for you is going to be a hobby or something you do on the side versus 
it actually being something that you want to make a career out of and understanding that like that is not something that'll happen immediately like there's mm-hmm. there's one in a million that just kind of kick off as soon as they start but like you're you're gonna have to understand that you're gonna be in the red in terms of your investment on the voice acting for a for a while because you know there's so much that goes into it especially with like equipment like i've spent probably over a thousand dollars on my microphone on my interface i spent like 500 dollars by itself on like foam that is all over the inside of my booth to you know drain out sound um a lot of people don't realize just how expensive the investment is into the actual equipment and how important that is um like one thing that my voice coach has told me and you, you, you see it a lot is you could be the best voice but if you don't have the equipment to handle how well your voice is you know you might have recordings with you know uh white noise in it or like little tiny sounds that you may not hear and that could be just enough for them to be like, okay, the voice was good, but the, the quality of the audio is not, so I can't work with this person. And more times than not, it's the quality of the audio that is more important than the voice because at the end of the day, they want to do as least work as they need to possible to make your audio usable. Like, there's a reason why when you play certain games and stuff, you know, you just hear voice, you don't hear any sounds or anything in the background and we've all certainly watched like low quality movies or played low quality games where it sounds like they're they're like muffled or they're in some type of environment and they just kept the 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 sound like you can easily tell the difference between the two and so it's it's an investment you know it's it's an investment that you have to be willing to make both mentally emotionally and definitely financially. Oh, yeah. All right. Yoga? For me, I've had uh, a 50-50. I studied a lot on the subject matter through one person. And then they helped me branch out through other people. Like, I started out, I failed a lot. So I spent $300 on a set. Here's my recommendation to you guys. Technology is easier to grab. You don't have to, sorry, you don't have to spend nearly as much money now and then you would have like five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, You could start out on free platforms uh, if you want to make it full time and get practice. Like, you could start out on Fiverr. People demean Fiverr, thinking it's bad, but if you want to start and get better, you need to start somewhere. And the best way to do it is to get paid. But you need to do your homework. Um, I started out spending $300 on an interface mic and whatnot, but I didn't have a booth or a closet or something to put me in. So that was a waste of money. Make sure you have a spot in your home. That's another thing. Homework, homework, homework. Find a spot in your house that you know is silent. Look up what decibels it needs to be. Uh, You can get the materials uh, to start out. You could use couch cushion foam Mm -hmm. or the bed egg crate foam to start. And then uh, and use free software like Audacity or Reaper. Once you start getting money, put the money you've used, or uh, let's just say you get paid jobs in some way, shape, or form, despite them being low-paying, put it in a savings account, and then build from there. And like right now, um, my software, I use I use Adobe Audition mm-hmm. because it, it tests the sound. Um, it's paying for itself right now because it gives me everything I need. I finished an audiobook. And I looked up a tutorial on what the sound regulations and instructions are for the audiobook because um, apparently uh, ACX is is also free to sign up and start, but it is hard, 
hard and long hours, very little pay. So I would recommend Fiverr, but if you want to just get practicing, go to ACX, uh, Voices.com has some free uh, job listings, Mm -hmm. but you'll be last in line. It's uh, sometimes pay to play pays you more, but in the long run, do the calculations what's right for you. Um, is You don't even have to have a fancy mic, by the way, as long as your room is treated perfectly. Yeah. Jay said something important. Your air conditioning, if it's off and you don't hear humming or your pet's moving, you're good to go. Yeah. So be patient and so on and so forth. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just backing you up, girl. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, and and kind of the piggyback off of some of that stuff. Like our our job as voice actors is not necessarily to get the role. Our job as voice actors is to audition, um, and you should keep auditioning. Uh, kind of going back to what Yoko said, there's there's a lot of opportunities like to start to to learn. Like there's non paid positions that you could even. You know, start out with just to get the experience, just to kind of get into the flow. Like, especially with how technology is now, like, there's places on Discord. Uh, like, I'm part of a Discord called Voice Acting Club. Mm-hmm. And it's a great place for resources. They have casting calls all the time that are both paid and unpaid. Uh, even, like, a lot of directors are using Twitter now because it's just a lot more accessible and a lot easier for, um, people to see and you know audition so the the opportunities are there uh casting directors are using whatever they can to get the word out to, to cast for roles um you just have to audition for them uh, even if you don't feel like you're the best fit sometimes you do your audition and they hear your voice and all of a sudden they're like oh wow I didn't, I didn't think about this character talking this way, but from hearing your audition, you know, I can definitely see it. Like, you, you never really know until you try. And um, the worst, worst case, you don't get the role, but you've gained experience. Yeah. Um, like, non-voice acting related, like right now I'm working on an audition video for American Idol because you don't, like my thinking on that is even if I don't get picked, I don't lose anything for trying. You know, if anything, my voice gets out there, people have heard me sing, and all it does is creates a venue for more opportunity. Um, so yeah, I, 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 I never think it's a good thing to not try something unless, unless you're just not what they're asking. Like if they're asking for a female and you identify as a male, you shouldn't, audition for that because you know it clearly states what they wanted but you know you're there's always opportunity to discover more things about yourself and what you can do by trying for for roles because you know, like, I, like I said there's nothing you can lose from it other than you know or lose anything you experience and you get a no or a yes um I guess last thing is don't take no's personally because again like it's not that you were bad it's just that you may not have been what they were looking for yeah absolutely absolutely and you and uh being kind word of mouth send thank yous people Mm -hmm. if you're listening and you want to do voice acting no matter what it is free or not just say thank you for the audition i really appreciated it (laughs) That's it. You're in. Love it. That's all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to say thank yous to the both of y'all because you guys were hey. such a delight today. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that was good. That was good. Um, I felt like I learned a lot. So that, that was fun. Um, but yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what you two do in the future because mm-hmm. you two are very talented All right. sure well you know you're, making, just... me... you're making me blush darling <laughs> <laughs> well 
Well, you know, I wanted to do, uh, you know, something more, a little more educational this time around. Instead of just talk about comic book movies like we mostly do. But since we got a few minutes <laughs> left, <laughs> I'm going to run down through a few topics I wanted to touch on. Uh, the War for Wakanda Avengers expansion. Don't get, don't buy it. Don't play it. it it's fun playing as Black Panther, but it's, it's the same boring ass gameplay you got giant enemy spiders and they suck it's just like what frankie said a year ago you're going down the same corridors only in wakanda and fighting the same boring ass robots but didn't you sh- they like update the game so that like you had to grind more because people were getting to certain levels too fast or something like that yes you are correct when you reach level 25 uh the grind becomes a lot harder it's like they it's like they're artificially forcing people to play their game longer. Oh my gosh! We spend, to be mad. We spend your money to get levels quicker. Otherwise, you're gonna. T- it's gonna take forever to you, for you to get from level twenty five to twenty six. Yes, and uh, you can ask Yoko. Like I was the biggest defender of this game for a long time, but this this is the you thing sure that were. this is the thing that broke me. Like I got up to the final boss, and I had to go. So I was like, all right, it's gonna leave me at the final boss. I had to replay this whole level over again, and it's like the most oh, tedious God. thing. And I was I just legit done. my game away so you could have fun with Spider Man. Yeah, get, get Miles. Is Spider Man still not in the game though? Not Are he's not just... in it yet. <laughs> they they said uh, by the end of the year, but at this point, I don't give a shit. You want to play Spider Man? <laughs> play uh, pick up the Spider Man remastered or Spider Man Miles Morales. They're both cheap as hell. Play that. But uh, if you want some Black Panther action, I suggest you watch the What If episode of Black Panther. He's uh, It's What If Black Panther Became Star-Lord, and it's pretty cool. Uh, Chadwick yeah. Boseman gives his uh, his last performance as T'Challa. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, I've been playing No More Heroes 3 so far, so good. It's very cool. Uh, I played with some buddies yesterday. We had a blast. Uh, definitely recommend that. Um, me and Yoko watched The Suicide Squad. I loved it. Yeah, she loved it. I thought it was pretty dope. It was way better than that crappy one we got. Yeah, that, years that's back. the one thing that I've been hearing. It's like if if there's anything to take out from this movie, it's that it's uh, it's the true first Suicide Squad. <laughs> Yeah, this movie is what they should have made the first time around. Especially uh, the opening scene is great. Like, they just KO half the cast. It's beautiful. Um, Harley Quinn gets to show off her skills again. She's always a delight to watch. John Cena was funny. Um, I'm going to get you that Funko Pop, Yoko, of John Cena. Don't you worry. (laughs) My cat hates Jennifer Lawrence. I don't want John Cena in his tidy whities I showed it to my one of my gal pals, and she was just, like, fanning herself. And I was like, girl, it's John Cena. Like, come on. I don't want to see his potato crotch. <laughs> you want to see it? I don't want to see it. Why are there dicks on the beach? <laughs> it's a dull diaper. No, the, the, the MVP of that movie was Ratcatcher. She was OP, man. She was legitimately my favorite character. But yeah, check it out. It's on HBO Skinamax. Uh, you know, DC finally got a movie they can like say that's not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Should they even be proud of that? Like, it's, it's just funny how like DC when it comes like when it comes to animated movies, DC like they they're on point with it, and then it's the live action ones, and it's just like. Yeah, I, re- I still really like Shazam. I got I still gotta show you Shazam, Yoko. Shazam's really good. It's been sitting on my wait list, and I was like, I'll just wait. Yeah, I'll just probably we'll probably watch it when I'm over there. It's like I'll watch this tomorrow, like two years later. Oh. Right? No, yo, that's, <laughs> <me>. <laughs> that's real. Me. Oh man. And uh, I saw Shang Chi on Friday, and holy crap, man! It's, I heard a lot of good things about it. Shang Chi was the it was the shit. It was so good. Like I was so surprised. Like I didn't really expect 
much. I'm like, okay, he's probably gonna do like a few kung fu moves and stuff. Nah, man, I was wrong. Yoko, this this movie is literally a live action episode of Jackie Chan Adventures. My other friend, I said, I told my friend that, and she was like, "That's not what. That's not what it's like." And I was just, just like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> See Jackie Chan. That's not Jackie Chan. No, it's funny. Yo, I will. I, 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 I will have a look. Yeah, and my girl Nora from Queens is in it. Hey, hey, hey. Gotta support, but, but yeah, like I highly, re- I highly recommend it to the both of y'all. It's like it's so much fun. But yeah, uh, you guys have anything else to say before we wrap it up? Nope. <laughs> I'm Shaquita Lafondria. She's like, I got stuff to do. Shut up already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to the rent, going to the Renaissance Fair. So. Thank you so much. Thank you to Jay for coming on. You were great. Uh, thank you for not going. Yeah, thank you for not going into a rant like your boyfriend did last time about keeping games, preserving them. <laughs> Yo, you funny. I mean, like, you invited a collector. You should have expected that. That was like a half hour long rant. I'm not even joking. You can check the tape. <laughs> Yo, stop. <laughs> and yeah, I hope everybody's Labor Day weekend was great. Stay safe and have some barbecue. You as well. Right. Bye, everyone. Take care. That's a wrap.